Sir? All right, and as you're looking at that, let's pray, all right? We're going to pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day and this time together. We pray that you would bless us uh, in your word and show us what we need to know so that we may follow you more fully. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, now, we're going to go over the Ten Commandments, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over here so we can see the board because we have some of your classmates and people from Minnesota watching this. Well, we have people from Minnesota. Yeah, in Illinois. Dope. They're, oh, I'm going to be famous. They're watching you. How many you. views do we get? How many views? Yeah. Well, let's see. Um, I think sometimes you get like 11 or 12. Sometimes. Anyway, uh, this is what I want to do. This is, what, this is what I want to do. I want to go over the Ten Commandments briefly. Do we get to come up there and write them? Yes, you do. 12, yes. that's more people than that's in this little town. All right. I know. Come on, we got more people than 11 here. They it's pretty much our whole high school. 13. Yeah, I, I mean, I realize that. But we're talking about like the whole town. Kids in the high school. There are old people in this town. I'm one of them. Anyway, here. <laughs> um, all right, Jackson, give me the first one. Number one. All right. It's all by right. number one. Go ahead. Oh, no. There's 13, 7 through 12. Wait, 13. Oh, I, I will count seven. All right. Okay, one is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know what it is, but I'm just going to, like, summarize it. God comes, God comes first. first. <laughs> well, that's 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 a good try. Yeah. No, like no idols. Kind right. Of no other god. Yeah. Right. No other god. So write that down. No other god. All right. God comes first. That's a good. That's a good. That's a good way to put it, though. God comes first. All right. Very good. That's one thing. All right. Uh, hey. Number two. Come on, Mike. Yeah. Oh. All right, now you guys, when you do the high five, you actually have to make contact. Yeah, I know. All right. Okay. All right, now say that out loud for everybody. Don't take God's name in vain. All right, very good. Number three, Taylor. Trace, not Quattro. Um, not Quattro either. Hey, do you have the rule um, like in your school where if you're gone for vacation more oh. than eight days, yeah. you have to retake the semester? No. Because they made that up and add more. And that is. By the way, when I'm doing this, uh, y y you know that back in the day, way back, teachers actually had to do that? Do what? Write the things on the board. I think I spelled that right. Two, yeah. two, two B's. Yeah. All right. Say I back. Say I back. I know. Well, it's a weird that I was in school there was a chalkboard. Yeah. Yeah, we had it in kindergarten, too. Kindergarten, when there was one in. What? I feel like I'm old. Wait, what school other than Starkweather have you been to? Because I because I remember when Jaden Huber was like, All right, thank you. Taylor Berg is coming back or something like that. Yeah, I left for some All what right. What school did you go to? Jackson. Number four. Oh, oh sweet. All right. Hey, what was number three? Taylor? Go ahead and say it. Remember the same thing with the holy. All right, and what is that one? Honor your mom and dad. Honor your mother and father. Very good. Very good. All right. Okay, that's Hayden. rude. Hayden. There you go. Number five. Did you say shout? You say shout, didn't you? Did you see that, uh, what's his name? Say that again. Say, you say what again. You shall not kill. You shall not kill. All right, Taylor, come on up. Did you, you see that Cameron Hayward didn't make the Pro Bowl? No, I, I, I haven't paid attention to that. Oh, my gosh. Everyone 
everybody's everybody's so mad about that now because everybody says he's the best defensive end in the league right now. Well, you know what though? What? If he wins the Super Bowl, who cares? Yeah. Yeah. See, my, my thought is, Pro Bowl doesn't mean anything to me. You know what matters to me? What? Get the ring. Oh, yeah. Get the Same ring. Here. All right, very good. What is it? You shall not commit adultery. All right. All right. Jackson. Oh, um, hang on. I need to study for two seconds. Study for two seconds. One Can I bring this up there? Nope, no, I want you right now. Two mi- okay, sweet. All right. You, just kidding. I don't actually spell it like that. You cannot. Ah. <laughs> you can't erase it with your fingers like you can on a whiteboard. All right. So what is the commandment? Um, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not put, steal. But I just put you can't steal. All right. In. All right. I steal in basketball, though. Yeah, well, that's actually legal there. What? It's legal to steal in basketball. Yeah. It's part I of thought, the game. I thought you said that's illegal. I was like, wait, what? No. All right. You shall not bear what? False witness. All right. And that, that means what? What means what? Very false witness. What's that really mean? Um... I don't really know, hey. actually. Don't lie about people. Do the Heisman, do the Heisman. All right. Guys, what's Bear Colts witness me? Um, don't, don't lie. Don't lie don't about lie. people. All right. Don't speak wrongly about people. Okay? Ugh. I fell out against... All right. Taylor, next one. Yeah, I fell out against Wall a lot. I fell out all the time. All right. I don't know how to spell that. All right, now T H O U. What's the, what's the commandment? Thou shalt not covet All right. All right, last one. Israel wrote both of them. Not just you won't come at your neighbor's wife, you won't come at anything that belongs to your neighbor. Alright? Alright, thank you. Go ahead, sit down. Alright, so let's go over this one more time, guys, because it's important. Alright, the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other God. Say it with me. You shall have no, no other God. God. Don't take God's name in vain. Don't take God's name in vain. Okay, that means no cursing, no swearing. Uh, it, it, it means don't. Don't use his name to do anything except what? Pray, or something? Pray preach, worship, teach, preach, teach, bless. Okay? I got preach, teach, this, this. <laughs> Number three. <laughs> Remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Keep it holy. Honor your father and mother. Right. Yeah, I don't get why they don't play football like on the weekdays and stuff. Well, because yeah. mom and dad are too busy working to play football. All right, now, here we go. Number you five. Shall not kill. You shall not kill, right? Or murder, really. Okay? You shall not commit adultery. It's a reminder that God protects marriage and family. Okay? And not be gay. 
shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. neighbor. That's right. I ran out of room. All right. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Don't lie about your neighbor. Don't say the wrong thing about them. Oh, and, and to your, uh, Jackson, to your statement about this, you know, and, and don't be gay. All right? Oh, yeah. I mean, what that, now, what I'm going to say about that is this. God, God can heal gay people. Yeah. Okay, he can save them. But it is true that marriage is only between a man and a woman. And that's the only place where sex is to be had in marriage. Okay? All right. Number nine. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. Right? So like TP it? No, you won't TP in your neighbor's house. And then ten is, ten, it properly understood, ten is really saying don't covet anything or anyone that is part of your neighbor's house. Okay? All right, now, guys, we're going to move on into the Lord's Prayer. So I want you to open up your catechisms. Oh, I know this one. All right. Come on, we're going to say the, the Lord's Prayer real quick, and then we're going to go over it, all right? Okay. Uh, we're going to actually start. Well, the Lord's Prayer is actually found... I'm having a brain fart, but I can't remember the words. But on page uh, 12. Okay. Okay. All right, now, let's say this together, all right? By the way, who gave us this prayer? God. God and who in particular? Jesus. Jesus, right. That's why it's called the Lord's Prayer. All right. Say it with me. Our Father... Who art, in heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy, name. Thy, kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, thy will be done on, earth as in heaven. on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, now, just look at page 13 here, okay? Page 13. I'm going to start with you, Jackson. Go, Jackson. Just take a bit. Okay, read that first part, the introduction. Our Father, who art in heaven, what does this mean? Should I keep reading? Yeah, read, read the whole thing. God thereby tenderly encourages us to believe that He is truly our Father and we are truly His children so that we may boldly and confidently come to him in prayer, even as beloved children come to their dear Father. Okay, very important here. Jesus is saying to us that we need to view God as a loving Father. All right, and that means that, that whatever our need is, we can be confident that he wants us to come and share it with him, and we should expect that he's going to meet the need. Now, I will ask this. Will he always meet the need the way we think he should? No, not always. He'll always meet the need, but many times it will come in ways we don't expect. And then sometimes, sometimes, when we're praying, we may be asking for something that's not his will. We've got to be careful about that. How do you know God's will? By what you feel or by what the Bible says? What the Bible says. What the Bible says. We need to be very careful that we don't confuse the two. Because sometimes we feel a certain way, but it's not, it's not faithful to what God says. We need, to, we need to contain ourselves to pray what God says we should pray for. And you know what God says we should pray for? We should pray for our enemies and pray for their salvation. 
we should pray for those who need healing and expect that he's going to heal them. We should pray for deliverance for people. We should pray that people who don't have should receive what they need. And we also should pray for our families, our, our government, uh, for good government. We need to read the Bible so that we know what it is that God says we should pray for. And then pray what the Bible says. Okay? That's very important. Because if we're not praying God's will, you think he's going to give it to us? No? Or yes? If we're not praying God's will, do you think he's going to give it to you? No. No, he's not. So we need to be careful that we're praying the Bible. By the way, that's why uh, in church, in worship, when uh, we have these things that we say in church, uh, most of that that you're saying is directly from the Bible. You are praying the Bible back to God. This is what we want, Lord. We want what you told us we should want. Okay? All right. But if you ask according to his will, then you will get what you ask for. But remember that that can come in a variety of different ways and we need to be open to God and how he chooses to answer that prayer. Okay? All right. I'll give you, I'll give you one example. All right? Let's say that we're praying for healing because we know that Jesus says, you shall pray for the sick and they shall recover. Okay? That's what he says. Now, the question is, how is that healing going to come? Sometimes it comes as a miracle. In other words, it just happens. All right? Sometimes it takes a while. There might even be a doctor involved. And then sometimes... You've got to go to heaven where you're finally completely healed. So God will answer that prayer, but we have to be open to the way he's going to answer it. Okay? That makes sense to you? All right. All right, let's look at this now. The first petition. Hey, why don't you read that for us? Okay, you know what hallowed means? Yeah, it's hollow. No. Like my brain. No, no. First of all, you're not, you don't have a hollow head. Yeah, don't insult worry. yourself. You're, but you're, can't be hollow, hollow, hollow means it's empty inside. Hallowed with the A. You see that? Hallowed? Yeah. That means holy. Oh. Something that's sacred. Okay? So really what we're saying is there, uh, Father, let your name be holy to us. Okay? Remember, we got done with the commandments, and one of the commandments, the second one is, not taking the name of the Lord your God in vain. All right? We want his name to be holy. Okay? We want to keep it holy. All right, so go ahead. What does this mean? God's name is indeed holy, in itself. But we pray in his petition that it may be hallowed, uh, also among us. Alright, so in other words, God's name is already holy. It doesn't mean, His name doesn't need us to make it holy. But we're asking Him that whatever we say and do would honor His name. Okay? It's like, it's like remember, I don't, I don't know if, 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 I don't know how you all are, but I remember when I was a kid, one of the things we were reminded when we went to school or before we went to school, especially me, I was reminded of this. Don't do anything to dishonor the name of your parents. Don't be foolish because they're going to think your mom and dad are foolish. All right? So what we're saying is, Lord, we don't want to do anything that makes people think wrongly of you. You're holy. We want them to know that you're holy. So we're asking your power in our lives so that we can show people how holy you are by living a holy life. All right, go ahead and finish that up. How is this done? When the word of God is taught in its truth and purity, and we as God's children lead holy lives in accordance with it, 
This grant us, dear Father, has it. But whoever teaches and leaves right. otherwise than God's word preaches profane the, the name of God among us. From this, preserve us, Heavenly Father. All right, let me give you an example of what that's talking about. You guys, you guys have seen in the news, probably from time to time, that there are uh, pastors or priests who have been caught not doing nice things to children, or they've been stealing, or things like that. All right. Now, if somebody sees a pastor doing that, a pastor is supposed to be honoring God. All right. See a pastor doing that or a priest do that. What do you think they might think about God? That he's fake. That he's fake. That's right. Ooh, Brian, like... Well, you've done more than that, right? But look, understand that's the gravity of the situation. Now, by the way, that these priests and pastors are doing wrong things doesn't make God fake, but it, it, it makes their lives dishonoring to God because they're dishonoring God's name all right people are looking at them and they're having a wrong idea about who God is and about what the church is about okay that's true for us as well okay if we're not honoring God if we're living for the world we're getting drunk uh, we're cursing and swearing we're we're misusing people and yet we call ourselves Christians how do you think that reflects on Jesus? Not good. Good or bad? Bad. Right? Because they're going to say, well, where is this new life you're supposed to have? It's not there. So we're asking the, the, the Lord to give us his Holy Spirit so we can live a life that properly reflects God and his goodness. Okay? That's something we all have to be aware of. Okay? All right. Um, go ahead, uh, Taylor, read that second petition. And actually, um, I want you to read the second and the third, because really the second and third petition here go together very, very well. So go ahead and um, read the second and third petition for us. Live. Live a godly life here on earth and in heaven. Alright, by the way, uh, what Luther what Luther is telling us here is very important, and it's from the Bible. We cannot believe in God and we cannot live a holy life unless we have the Holy Spirit living within us. Okay? Sometimes uh, when you're in church, you'll hear me talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you'll hear me talking about what the Holy Spirit does in our lives. This is what he does. God living in us. So that we're not living by our the, 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 the wrong part of us that wants to do wrong. But we're living by his voice and by his power. We need him in us. So his kingdom comes, begins to come in us, as we receive the Holy Spirit. But now... Read that, read that third petition too. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What does this mean? The good, the good and gracious, gracious will of God is done in Jesus out of prayer, but we pray in the petition that it may do, be done also among us. How is this done? When God destroys and brings to nothing, to nothing at every evil counsel and purpose the world and our own flesh which would hinder us from hallowing his name and preventing the coming of his kingdom and when he strengthens us and keeps us steadfast in his word and in his faith even to our end he, this is his good and gracious will alright thank you 
All right, so again, we're talking about holiness of life. Now, understand, I'm going to bring these two together for you, okay? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. This is really speaking about two things. First of all, do you know that Jesus is going to come again? Did you know that? He is. He's going to bring a kingdom, a real kingdom, on the earth. So when we're praying this, we're saying, Father, send your Son and bring that kingdom out to put an end to the power of the devil, to our own sin, and to bring a perfect peace on earth. Okay, we're saying that. But the other thing we're saying is that until that happens, we are asking you to fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we can be witnesses to the coming of that kingdom. And as we live holy lives, you can show the world through us, by your Spirit, what that kingdom looks like. So the people will know by our love who Jesus is, and so they'll know by miracles who Jesus is, and so they'll know by deliverance from demons, the power of Jesus, and the way that the kingdom is, so that people will be saved. So we're asking two things. That his kingdom will come, and that until he comes, that we be filled with the Spirit, so that we can work, in, work for his kingdom. Okay? That makes sense? Okay. All right, let's look now at the fourth petition. Go ahead, uh, Jackson. Go ahead and read that for us. Oh, give us this day our daily bread. What does this mean? God indeed gives daily bread to all men, even to the wicked, without, or without our prayer. But we pray in, in this petition that he would lead us to acknowledge our daily bread as his gift to receive it with thanksgiving. Okay, go ahead and finish up. What is meant by daily bread? What is meant by daily bread? Everything that is required to satisfy our bodily needs, such as food and clothing, house and home, fields and flocks, money and goods. Uh, pious, you know what pious means? No. Believing. Okay. Believing parents. Believing parents, children, and servants. Godly and faithful rulers, good government, seasonable weather, peace and health, order and honor, true friends, good neighbors, and the love. In other words, your daily bread that you're called, that you're asking God for is not just food. It's everything you need. And by the way, a lot of what you need isn't, isn't something that you can put in your pocket and buy things with. You need love. You need, you need brothers and sisters in Christ. You need parents who love you and believe. You, you need people to help uh, lead you in faith. Uh, we need the Holy Spirit so we can walk in, in holiness of life. So the daily bread is everything that we need for this life, but also to lead us into the next life. Okay? Which means that we're never, we're never without a need, but we're also never without God's provision. Okay? And for that we can give thanks. All right, um, the fifth petition. Hey, go ahead. And to give our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. By the way, you know what a trespass is? Yeah, right. Absolutely. So you got more than one. Huh? You got more than one right. Yeah. Okay, trespassing, trespassing here is a good way of, of, of talking about sin. It means you went somewhere you weren't supposed to go. God has one way for you to go. You decided, I'm not going to listen to him. I'm going to go over and do something else. All right? Now you're going where you don't belong. Okay? We're asking the Lord to forgive us. And we're also promising that we're going to forgive other people who have done that to us. Okay? The first one's real easy, right? We can ask God, hey, Lord, Forgive us. We're sorry. And we won't do it anymore. But do you sometimes find it's hard yes. to forgive somebody else? Yeah. 
They maybe hurt you, did you wrong. You have a hard time getting over it. You know how you, you know how you finally forgive? It's a decision, it's not an emotion. You need to say to God and to yourself, I have forgiven, I let it go, and I bless them. And I refuse to take up any more hurt about the situation. Okay? It's a decision of the will, it's not an emotion. Don't wait to feel like you're, you're ready to forgive, because if you wait to feel like it, it won't come. Do it first, and God will work on your feelings. All right? All right, so go ahead. Go ahead and finish that up. What does this mean? We pray for his petition that our Heavenly Father would not regard our sins, nor because of them deny our prayers. For we neither merit... Merit. In other words, we haven't earned it. Merit, nor are worthy of those things for which we pray, but that he, that he would grant us all things through grace, even though... We sin daily and deserve nothing but punishment. And certainly we, on our part, will have partly forgive it and gladly do good to those who may sin against us. Okay, by the way, heartily forgive. You know what heartily forgive means? No. It means with all my heart, I'm going to let go of the pain and I'm going to forgive and I'm going to keep forgiving until my emotions agree with me, but I'm going to keep forgiving. And I'm going to do good to these people. I'm going to pray for their blessing. That's very important that you do that. Don't ever allow yourself don't ever allow yourself to fall into the trap of not forgiving someone. Because that will lead to nothing else but damage to you. Okay? All right, sixth petition. Go ahead. And lead us not into into temptation. What does this mean? God indeed tempts us, tempts no one to sin, but we pray in this petition that God would so grant and preserve us that the devil and the world and our own flesh may not deceive us, nor lead us into error and unbelief, despairing of the great and shameful sins. But what when so tempted? We may finally prevail and gain the victory. All right, come on over here, Dave. Okay, because I want to, I want to, I want to make this clear. You guys may have seen in the uh, in the paper or in the news uh, an article that said that the Pope wanted to change the Lord's Prayer, and in particular, they they pointed to this this petition: "Lead us not to temptation." Now, I read the article and I read what the Pope actually said. Now, I disagree with the Pope, obviously, on a number of different issues. But I will say this. All the Pope was really saying is what Luther said here. And that is that God leads no one into temptation. So when Jesus is saying to us, lead us not into temptation, what he's really saying to us is that we are praying that God would preserve us from acting in such a way that we would sin, move out of his grace, and enter into a, a state where we can be tempted and fall. Okay? That's what, that's what he's saying. And that's, that's what Luther's saying. That's what Jesus is saying. Okay? Now let's look, let's look here at the seventh petition. All right, Jackson, go ahead and read that. In the seventh petition? Yep. Page 16. Okay, um, but deliver us from evil. What does this mean? We pray in the petition in this summary that our Heavenly Father would deliver us from all evil, all manner of evil, whether it affects body or soul, property or reputation, and at last, when the hour of death shall come, grant us a blessed end and graciously take us from this world to the sorrow of himself in heaven. All right, this world of sorrow to himself in heaven. All right. So, deliver us from evil. Actually, the, 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 the Greek there, uh, actually, it, it, it's a personal evil. It means it's the devil. Deliver us from the evil one. Okay? 
So what we're saying to the Father is, in the name, in the name of Jesus, by his blood, deliver us from every power of the enemy to cause us to sin or fall. Okay? Mm -hmm. And preserve us so that we can enter into heaven and not lose our salvation. Okay? That's what we're saying. All right. So one more, the conclusion. Hey, Daniel, come on in. Um, hey, why don't you read that conclusion for us? All right. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. What does the word amen mean? It means that I should be assured that these petitions are acceptable to our Heavenly Father that, and are heard by Him. Mm -hmm. For he himself is commanded, commanded us to pray in his manner <coughs> and has promised to hear us. Amen, amen, that is yes, yes, it shall be so. Okay, the word amen, then, is a word in the Hebrew, by the way, that means it's, it's going to be done. It's guaranteed. That's why Jesus uses that word in the Gospel of John so often, when he says, truly, truly, I say to you. In other words, he's saying, I'm telling you something that's absolutely guaranteed. You need to pay attention. So when we say amen in the name of Jesus, whenever we pray, if we're praying the Bible, we're praying what God says, it's guaranteed we can expect that God will do everything that he said. Okay? All right, any, any questions? All right, well, what you guys can do then is two things. Memorize the Lord's Prayer. And then I want you to, over the, the break, read pages 104 to 120. And then we'll go over it when we meet again January 3rd, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, any questions? Comments? No? All right, well, let's pray, okay? Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together. We ask that you would give us protection on the way home. And we also pray, Lord, that you would uh, be honored and glorified by us as we worship you this Christmas season. We thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ and for the salvation that he brings. Lord, keep us mindful of all that you've given us, that we may live lives of thanksgiving and praise. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. All right. Well, guys, we'll see you all a little later. All right. Thanks for coming. Come on.